welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 106th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're going to talk about how to squash that negativity that sometimes pops up in our heads for no other reason than it just does. I'm really excited to dive into this one and share with you some tools that I use and that I know other people use as well and that have been fantastically effective. But before I get to today's topic and dive right into those, um, you may hear some background noise. Um, Joining me today in the office is Norman, and he is exhausted, as we all are in my household. This weekend has been a beautiful one here in Bend, and the sun has been out and the heat has been high. Needless to say, we've been out enjoying it, and today's walk this morning, even though we tried to go very early, oh my goodness, when we came back, we were just tuckered, and so we flipped on the French Open, we watched Andy Murray and Novak Djokovic, and I will admit that I think I fell asleep during it because I was just so dang tired. Anyway, Norman is continuing to indulge in his napping, and so you may hear a bit of snoring, bless his heart. But Also, I want to give you a hint as to what today's Petit Plaisir is. It is a fantastic romantic comedy, a French film, in fact. So if my Francophile lovers, you're, that's repetitive, but if my Francophiles, you're going to enjoy this film. I just came across it and absolutely adored it. And I think you will as well. So be sure to stay tuned for the end of today's episode where I dive more into what that film is all about. But now to today's topic, titled 10 Tools Fulfilled People Utilize in Their Lives to Squash Negativity. We're going to squash it. I'd like to begin with a quote from a book that I have had on my desktop for quite a while and have read it and reread it certain parts more than once. Um, And it has been very enlightening and helpful and inspiring. And I definitely looked to it for today's episode. And so the book that I'm talking about is by Ariana Huffington titled On Becoming Fearless in Love, Work, and Life. And that is how I want to begin today's episode with a quote from the book. And it's a long one. So sit back and soak it in. Here we go. When we know who we are, we can overcome our fears and insecurities. We surpass our smaller selves who suffers the slings and arrows of our conditioned reality. And we move to the unconditional truth of our larger selves. The answers to the questions of what to say, what to do, whom to let in and whom to keep out become a clear and simple matter of listening to our hearts. That inner voice helps us align with our purpose because each of us has a purpose, even if we judge it to be insignificant. The voice is there. We just need to listen to it. When we do that, we live in fearlessness. Today's episode is all about really Knowing ourselves, recognizing certain feelings and why they crop up, and but then also knowing how to handle them. Fearlessness, not being intimidated by a life in which tomorrow or the future is unknown, is inspiring advice to give. But let's be honest, it is a hard approach to embrace as the doer of being fearless. We all want to be, but in certain moments, it can be tougher than other, others. In fact, being brave becomes even harder when we've had a bad day when our energy is low, and when we've been presented with something we mightily want, but due to our lack of success in that particular area, we have a lack of confidence that we truly believe we can attain it. A couple years ago in 2013, I shared 10 surefire ways to fix a bad day, and I'll provide a link to it on today's episode. And so today I'd like to take it one step further. What if that bad day or moment is prompted by what is dancing around in your mind? What if you're having a hard time being fearless, even when you know you should be? 
What if you are typically a very optimistic, hopeful person, but for some reason on this particular topic or issue, you can't seem to kick the negative head talk to the curb? Well, having been in this situation more than a few times, I've finally found tools that have enabled me to squash the negativity trying to pull me down, and I cannot wait to share them with you today. I want to first begin before I dive into the tools by saying I haven't completely obliterated negativity for my life. And this is the thing. We're all dynamic individuals. We're always continuing to grow. We're stretching ourselves and we're trying new things. We're becoming better and improved versions of ourselves. And because of this, we will never entirely rid our lives of negative thoughts because they will continually pop up. But the difference is, the difference is, is how we handle these moments when they arise. And that's what these tools, these 10 tools are going to do. They're going to help you be able to immediately come back and not waste any extra energy or emotion on things that you don't need to be. You don't need to be so that you can continue to live your fulfilling life that you enjoy living. So let's get right into this. Number one is when you need love, give love. This is a simple formula that works. Not only does it shift the focus from feelings of momentary loneliness or lack, but it gives to those to enable them to feel what you know is truly uplifting and heartwarming. This giving can be to anyone, but it is something that improves their lives, no matter how small, or reminds them of how special they are, or merely gives them a boost of reassurance. Large, small, someone you know, someone you don't, someone you're just an acquaintance with, or someone you're intimately involved with, just give love in some capacity, in some capacity. Perhaps it's a phone call to catch up with a friend from a distance or maybe a car to let someone know you're thinking of them. Better yet, plan on doing something with someone that they have been wanting to do. Making time for people is one of the most powerful gestures of love because when we feel lonely, it's what we crave from those whose company we enjoy, their time, their presence. In other words, flip the scenario on its head and give what you desire. So number one is when you need love, give love. Number two is shift your focus. I briefly mentioned that whole idea. Number one, right? Shift the focus from what you need to what others need. But this one goes a little bit broader. It can be easy when we have free time on our hands to grumble about what isn't going well. But in those moments, think of the fact that you have free time. Why do you have free time? So many things are going well to afford you the ability to have free time, to worry, to have that wandering thought. You have a clean house. You have a house. You have good health, food in the fridge, food in the kitchen, a clear mind, good weather, loved ones in good health. There's so many things you could absorb that allow you to have that free time to worry. Okay, now that we have that free time, we need to shift what we're doing in it, right? So perhaps the moment a few things aren't going as you had hoped, maybe in love, maybe at work, or maybe with your everyday routines, but rather than focus on focusing on what you are lacking, why not, as Ariana Huffington suggests, quote, approach our lives with fearlessness and trust. Now, trust that you are in the middle of the journey and you need to keep on moving forward so it can fall together. If you remain stagnant and grumble about what you don't have, you will never attain it because you're stagnant. You're not moving forward. Move forward. Exercise fearlessness and trust that your journey is headed in the right direction. So number two is shift your focus. Number three, dive into what you love. One of the best things I ever made a regular habit of was diving into what I loved. In fact, the Simply Luxurious Life blog came about because I was not satisfied with the quality of my days. And so I dove into where my curiosities resided. I have never looked back. Sure. Sometimes I have to remind myself of this self-taught lesson, but when I sit down to write, to explore, to go on walks with my dogs, capture pictures of scenes that bring a smile to my face, play in the kitchen, play in the garden, or attempt anything for the first time that tickles my curiosity, I am present. I am in the moment and I have no time to let my negativity grab hold. So number three is dive into what you love. Number four, remind yourself of what went well. In Martin E.P. Siegelman's book, Flourish, he discusses the psychology behind fixating on what is going wrong versus what is going well. For evolutionary reasons, he reminds us that our ancestors prepared for disaster, of which there were many, and therefore we're more likely to survive than those who sat, for example, basking in the sunshine. Makes sense. Makes sense. However, in our modern world, we take the worrying too far. 
But this worrying can be fixed by honing a skill that will reduce our habit of jumping on the worry wagon. Simply write in your journal each night three things that went well. No matter how small, just write them down. Try to stick this for one whole week. And in time, this will become a habit, a positive habit that will reinforce the observation of what is going well more often than what is going badly. So we really do need to train ourselves to think more positively. It is a human disposition to think of the worst, to think of the worry, uh, that things, that, what could happen. We though can control our minds and it takes practice just like everything. It takes practice. So train your brain basically with this little practice. Number four, remind yourself of what went well. Number five, re-examine your well-being. This one is a big one. I think it's more powerful than we realize. And sometimes we don't even know that it's not an alignment until a little bit later down the road. And we're like, oh, that's why I was thinking that. Or that's why I allowed myself to finish the sentence. So often our mind slips into the negative when we haven't been tending to our well-being as much as we should have. First of all, what is well-being? Well, simplistically, it is the state of being comfortable, healthy, or happy. And so it involves many arenas of our lives, mental, physical, social, emotional, personal, and professional. It is our ability to reach the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs to be self-actualized. And we actually talked about this in depth in episode 25, and I'll provide a link to that episode on today's show notes. It is a combination of many different aspects, such as feeling satisfied with our overall life, feeling a sense of accomplishment or having a satisfying direction in, in our lives, being involved in healthy, happy, supportive relationships, feeling engaged in our lives, whether it's with our community, our neighborhood or the world. It's when we tend to our health with our regular physical exercise, our diet and our mental strength. Sometimes a slip or a dip in one, just one of these areas that has normally been strong in the past can make us doubt ourselves in other areas. The tricky part, as I said, in the, at the top of this discussion of number five is that it's when we haven't figured it out that something is off within our well-being that can cause us to dive into negativity further than necessary. And so we need to be aware of our well-being and know how to fix the gaps and adjust this and adjust that as we go. And it is always a moving process. It's always evolving and changing. But if we can be aware of that, we can then mend it and then move forward in the right direction. So number five is make sure we're constantly aware of our well-being, re-examining it, making sure all cylinders are firing. Number six is indulge in a healthy way of releasing emotions. Emily V. Gordon in Super You, Release Your Inner Superhero, recognizes that sometimes there will be moments in our lives when we have built up emotions and we must get them out somehow. Sometimes these are just emotions that while we know how to fix what ails us, we still have to release the frustration. The key is to indulge in an activity that is not relationship damaging or self-destructive. Each one of us will have different releases, but it's important for each of us to find a few ways that work for us. Maybe you just need to cry it out. So turn on a tearjerker movie. Maybe it's an intense CrossFit class or squashing garlic with your knife and fist garlic butter anyone <laughs> the underlying key for this to be successful gordon reminds us is that you must know why you are feeling emotional and when you are engaged in this healthy practice of releasing releasing emotions gordon reminds that we should say the reason out loud or if we're in that crossfit class say it under our breath Maybe, for example, your mother-in-law stepped on your toes one too many times. And even though you stood up for yourself and things worked themselves out, you still have that frustration. You want to let off some steam. Or, or maybe your fifth first date of the year did not pan out and you just need to get that frustration out. While no, there's nothing you can do about either one of those beyond what you already have, you may still have that energy that needs to be released. And you need to get that negative energy out so that it doesn't inflict unnecessary damage on you or anyone else that you love. So the key is first to recognize what you're feeling and why you're feeling it. And the second part of that is to release that motion healthily. And that was discussed. And again, in Emily V. Gordon's book, Super You, Release Your Inner Superhero. And I'll provide a link to her book on today's show notes. So number seven, moving on, is just a basic one, but a very important one, exercise. 
Speaking of a fantastic release, sometimes our negativity builds up because we haven't given it a way to release itself, to get out of us. And regular exercise is a great way to eradicate that yuck from our day. It sometimes isn't anything of importance or anything to talk about, but sweating it out lets it roll off of our shoulders that much easier. When we're working out, we're so busy focused on the moment. And when we're done, we're exhausted. So therefore, our minds want nothing more than to relax instead of worry. So they just relax. In other words, use your energy in positive outlets. Your abs, arms, legs, and heart (laughs) will thank you. So number seven is exercise and do so regularly. Number eight is get a good night's sleep. Equally important each and every night is a good night's sleep. Your mind needs to be recharged. It needs to be re-energized so that it can think clearly. And when we give it that seven, those seven to nine hours of sleep that it needs, we are less likely to get in our own way. On the flip side, when we are not rested, as you all know, I do too, worrying is easier because we're not thinking clearly. We're just not able to ward off that negativity and we're more apt to fall prey to our mind manipulations. So get a good night's sleep as much and as often as you can. Number nine is see a therapist. For many years, I have wanted to see a therapist or a counselor as a preventative tool. So when I finally found someone I was comfortable with and who understood why I wanted to schedule the sessions, I found it to be immensely beneficial. For some, going to a counselor is to show a sign of weakness and That mindset is too bad because often they're not aware of the benefits that can come into their lives. And whether you're seeing a counselor or a therapist for assistance to fix an aspect of your life or as a preventative means, you should never see an investment in your overall well-being as any way, shape or form as a flaw. In fact, it actually takes great strength to say, hey, I want to improve and I know I can't do everything or know everything. So perhaps an objective outsider can help me reach my full potential. What a profound thought. That's really thinking outside the box. That's really saying, hey, there are other wiser, more expertise people in certain areas that I may not be privy to. And it takes a lot of courage to do this. So if you're already doing it, I pat you on the back. And if you're thinking about it, but you're not sure, I encourage you to do so. In fact, on my first session, I will just say this. I was so giddy. It was like I was going to you know, the candy store if I was a little kid or it was Christmas morning. I kid you not. And my counselor was so fantastic. She read me correctly. She just smiled. But it truly was me saying, I am here to continue to improve myself and make sense of my goals and better figure out how to make them a reality, all the while assisting myself and getting out of my own way. Going back again to the author of Super You, Emily V. Gordon, she shared that going to a counselor or a therapist is a moment to focus entirely on you. And during those sessions, when for the most part, your life is going well, it's very much like a spa treatment. I could not agree with her comparison more. It really is. Depending on where you live, some countries may make seeing a counselor very affordable. Woohoo, France. Grance Doré talks about this in one of her episodes on her podcast, and it's actually very inexpensive in France. But not always is that the case. As in America, we need to work on this a little bit, but without question. It is a tool going to a counselor, seeing a counselor regularly, maybe it's once a month, maybe it's once a week, whatever it is that works for you, it is something that will work very well if you allow it and it will absolutely be worth the investment. It may take you time to find the right counselor or therapist, but be willing to keep searching until you find them if this is something you think would be beneficial. I know it has been and continues to be for me. So number nine is see a therapist. Number 10 create and maintain rituals. Something we talk about often here on the Simply Luxurious Life blog and the Simple Sophisticate podcast is the inclusion of rituals in your everyday routine. And I've provided a few links from previous posts and podcasts that talk about these this in more depth to give you some ideas. From either daily to weekly and even monthly as well as seasonally, rituals provide a moment of pleasure as well as it frees our minds up so we don't have to create it out of thin air. Emily V. Gord reiterates, in order to have rituals that hold a powerful, positive influence over our lives, we need to keep them clear and simple and then enact them regularly. 
So stick to your morning walk in the morning, sip that hot cup of tea in the evening and paint your toes on Sunday while watching your favorite reality shows. It will relax you and tend to your well-being all at the same time without breaking the bank. So number 10 is create and maintain rituals. Part of the inspiration for sharing today's episode was that I recognized from firsthand experience, sometimes we can get in a funk. It doesn't mean our lives are going horribly. In fact, they may be going quite swimmingly, but sometimes we aren't aware that our well-being is out of whack. And until we do recognize why we are feeling the way we are, we can get down on ourselves and our lives. The good news is that now we have the tools. Now we can use this as a checklist as we remind ourselves, one, we are human and negativity will creep in from time to time, no matter how amazing our lives are. And number two, we know how to move past it quicker with these tools so that it doesn't negatively affect ourselves or those we love unnecessarily. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you want any of the links that were mentioned, visit the blog, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast one Oh six. But now stay tuned for this week's petit plaisir. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'll see you in just a few. So I have found a Francophile romantic comedy that I think you're going to enjoy. It came out in France in 2014, in Germany in 2015, and was recently added to Netflix here in the States this year. It is simply called Sex, Love, and Therapy in the U.S. or Du Vu, Du Vu Pas. Do you want it or not? <laughs> Depending on where you are watching it. And it stars two fantastic French actors. Uh, both of them I have seen in other French films. And maybe you have too. Patrick Bruhl is also in What's in a Name, which I recently watched um, a few months ago and highly recommend. I'll provide a link to the trailer on today's show notes. And Sophie Marceau from A Chance Encounter, which, by the way, I have not seen A Chance Encounter, but I saw the trailer and I think it'll probably probably be a future petit plaisir. It looks like a fantastic film. It becomes available um, next week on DVD and I'm assuming and hopefully hoping that it'll be on Netflix as well. So stay tuned. But again, back to what this film's about. It is called Sex, Love and Therapy and it involves these two, Burrell and Marceau, who let's just say they love sex. They love the opposite sex. And they're trying to change their ways and they end up, let's see, the meet cute is when she applies for a temp job after returning to Paris and he is trying to distract himself from beautiful women and temptation. Well, he hires her and the comedy ensues as you would imagine, but um it is their banter and their rapport that is magnetic. And I think you will enjoy it immensely. Here is the trailer. And yes, it is in French. So if you already know French, you're going to adore it. If not, you will probably pick up a few of the French words, if not the tone. So here is the trailer for Sex, Love, and Therapy. Oh bah merde alors. Ton licenciement, c'est encore du cul T'as vraiment l'esprit mal placé. Les relations sexuelles ont toujours été désintéressées. Le seul avec qui j'aurais pu coucher utile, c'est vous. J'aurais peut-être dû. Bonjour, je m'appelle Lambert. J'étais un dépendant sexuel. Et il est abstinent depuis dix mois. Trois semaines et deux jours. Il est temps que tu reprennes le contact en douceur avec une femme. Mais attention, rien pendant les premières semaines. C'est comme après un régime. Je peux vous baiser Enfin, je peux vous, vous, vous aimer vous, et, pardon. Tu veux ou tu veux pas J'ai rendez-vous pour un travail. Si j'arrive en boitant, ça la fait mal, non Vous venez pour le remplacement Si tu veux. Alors Tu as trouvé une remplaçante mmh. Elle est compétente J'ai accumulé beaucoup d'expérience. Ici, on reçoit que des couples. C'est pour ça qu'on travaille en duo. Tu veux Moi aussi, j'ai beaucoup travaillé en duo avec des hommes. C'est arrivé une fois, qu'une seule fois. Mais évidemment, tu n'as plus une secrétaire. Mais à part ça, vous faites l'amour Tous les jours Toutes les semaines Tous les mois Tous les ans Tu dites c'est le Graal, cette fille. Elle est dangereuse. Votre bas est en train de filer. C'est pour vous indiquer le chemin. Elle revient à la charge sans arrêt. Elle est prête à tout. C'est moi avant, mon fille. Ah, parce que vous, le cul, ça vous plaît pas. Mais non, l'enjeu majeur, c'est le temps de la parole, de l'échange. Je, je peux la baiser une fois. Pas d'échange physique. Quand j'ai bu, je fais n'importe quoi. Je sens sur n'importe qui. Merci. 
Franchement, les coups d'un soir ne m'intéressent pas. Ah non, mais moi non plus. Plusieurs coups, plusieurs soirs, c'est mieux. Needless to say, it's not for young viewers, but for those adults that are listening, which I think are most of us, you will absolutely adore this. Sit down with a glass of wine with your friends, with your partner, and just simply enjoy the comedy and the romantic love affair that ensues as well as Paris. It's set in Paris. Why wouldn't, I mean, that's fantastic. I'll provide a link to the the film on Netflix and other places you can find it on today's show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast one Oh six. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petit plaisir where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable tune in at the end of each monday's podcast where i'll recommend a book a film or a recipe anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste thank you for tuning in to the simple sophisticated podcast where intelligent living is paired with signature style for more ideas and inspiration throughout the week stop by the blog the simply luxurious life.com or pick up the book choosing the simply luxurious life a modern woman's guide to stay caught up on the most recent podcast blog post and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration each week subscribe to the simply luxurious life's newsletter which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.